Welcome back to the lead. Sticking with politics, new nasty robocalls are being made in Utah by a white supremacist group targeting third-party candidate Evan McMullen. McMullen is cutting into Trump's lead in the normally red state. They go after McMullen in a very personal and ugly way. Take a listen to part of it. Hello, my name is William Johnson. I'm a farmer and a white nationalist. I make this call against Evan McMullen and in support of Donald Trump. Evan is over 40 years old and is not married and doesn't even have a girlfriend. I believe Evan is a closet homosexual. Do you know what I mean? I was Evan McMullen. E Evan, thanks so much for being here. First of all, just to get this off the table, the, the robocall from this racist says that you support open borders and it says uh, that you're gay. I'm... I don't think either of those are true, are they? No, neither are true. I support securing the borders and enforcing our laws, and I am straight. Trump spokeswoman Hope Hicks said, quote, we strongly condemn this rhetoric and these activities of which we have no knowledge. What's re your reaction uh, to this? Do you think the, the Trump campaign had any idea that it would happen? Do you think it might hurt your chances in Utah? Well, I don't know if they had any idea or not, but this is exactly the narrative that, and the approach that the Donald Trump campaign has had. So it didn't even surprise me when I heard news of the robocall. I just thought, well, of course, this is more of the same. I mean, Trump supporters have attacked me because of my faith. They've attacked my service. Uh, we've even received some death, threat, death threats from these white supremacists even recently overnight. Uh, they've attacked my family, but, you know, they've attacked so many other Americans, too. Donald Trump himself has bragged about sexually assaulting women and attacked people for the color of their skin and their faith. I mean, this is this is the Republican nominee, and, and none, none of this should surprise any of us. And, no, I don't think it will help him here in, in Utah, and I don't think it will help him really across the country. I think a lot of people see this sort of thing and, and will reject it. This is not the kind of leader we should have in our country at all. Over the weekend, uh, I played, I don't know if you saw the video, but there was a, a idiot in, in Phoenix yelling at the press, Jew S.A., Jew S.A., and I played some of the sound of that for Kellyanne Conway, uh, Trump's campaign manager, um, and she called him deplorable, but she denied um, any responsibility of the Trump campaign for any of these white nationalists, any of these racists, anti-Semitics, um, and they said whenever anybody in the press asks about it, are besmirching the tens of millions of Americans um, who are huh. supporting uh, Donald Trump. What do you make of it all? Well, I don't think that everybody who supports Donald Trump is a racist and, and a, a, a bigot in, in any way. But I do think that most bigots and most racists are supporting Donald Trump in this campaign. And he's doing everything he can through policy and tone to foment racial discord in this country and really to divide us along racial lines and religious lines. I mean, this is his approach. And frankly, when I, I served as a CIA officer for 11 years, this is the kind of thing I saw overseas with dictators overseas, authoritarians overseas. They, they like to divide the people who they seek to rule or who they are ruling as a way to to sort of empower themselves. It's a, it's a common tactic. We see this, we've seen this through time, the scapegoating of races and religions. And this is just not something that reflects American values. It certainly doesn't play here well. Here in Utah, it doesn't play well. And it doesn't play well in the broader Mountain West where we're spending a lot of time these days, but with so many Americans. And I just, I think it's a terrible campaign strategy to invite this sort of thing with the tone and again with the policy. They can say as many times as they want that, you know, they're, they're not directing this or that, you know, they're not associated with it. But the truth is, when, when Donald Trump says the things that he does, it, it invites the support of these kinds of people. I think he enjoys the support. I think he harbors some of the same feelings. And, and that's what you get. But, and then the real question is also, why does the Republican Party leadership still stand with him? You know, I've been a lifelong Republican voter, and Mindy Finn, my running mate, has been the same thing. And we just, we look at this and we say, this isn't the party we knew. This isn't the party of Lincoln. It's, it's disappointing. The latest polling in Utah uh, shows uh, Donald Trump ahead at 34 percent, Hillary Clinton 28, you at 20 percent. There's one week to go. I know you really want to Utah. You'd love to win all the states, of course, but Utah, perhaps uh, you have the best shot. What do you think you need to get you over the top? 
Yeah, well, most of the polls now are, are seeing that I'm within two percentage points of Donald Trump or, or leading. Those are the polls that, that we're seeing. Uh, so it's a dead heat. What, I, what do we need to get us over the hump? I think it's just making sure that our message gets out to people in Utah fully. I mean, we started with 0% name ID. A few weeks ago, it was at 50%, and we're just trying to close that gap as quickly as we can. Uh, Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton is, have sort of, they're both at nearly 100% name ID. People know what they stand for. People aren't happy with them. For us, it's just a race against the clock to get the word out about the candidacy and about our message of unity and standing up for equality and liberty in this country and true conservative values, which are reflected in our founding documents. The idea that, again, all men and women are created equal and that we all have inalienable rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, which in our, means, our, our uh, minds means limited government. It means returning power to the states and, and making reforms like this so that our government is, and our government power is more accountable to the people. Evan McMullen, I'm quite certain when you were serving our nation so bravely overseas, no one was questioning your faith or attacking your family. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you.